3rd or 24th, and he was by the house and cleaning his gun, and I was on side of the house and doing some washing. We didn't have electricity. That didn't go, I mean, you know, and uh, washing some clothes, and he says, could you wash my underwear or whatever, but so I had a tub there, and here we were on a farmhouse, and the chickens were across in the bushes there in the sand and stuff. And so you, it was nice weather, September weather, just like this September. Mm -hmm. And all outside, we have evacuated people. Some were working in the field with my dad, my dad, my sister, my brother, an evacuated man and his brother. They were shucking corn, getting corn out. We were doing the housework with the rest of the evacuees and making the dinner for all these people. I was washing clothes, and all of a sudden I heard zzz, and when it said zzz, oh, for four years we'd been under the Germans, so we knew a little bit what was going on. When it said zzz, I went down, and when I went down, I looked over there, I saw the chickens and pieces in the air, and you go down to that, the house isn't there anymore, but when you went down to the house after that, it's a brick, was a brick farm. That wall where I was standing outside, it was just pitted with shrapnel. And here I, just a fraction of a second. But here a plane had come over, the first jet booster plane in the world. The Germans had one plane. It came M over. M E sixty two. It yeah. came over our area, and it dropped these anti personnel bombs. It's to kill people against personnel, and they were out across the road on this side over here, right here, where this hotel is built. There were these five people. My dad, my brother, my sister, the evacuated father and his boy in the cornfield. And the bombs dropped right in there. And there again, my dad says down, but when he said down, he was down. And the rest of them, a second too late, a fraction of a second too late. He got back up. My sister was killed. My brother was laying there badly wounded. The father was badly wounded after the evacuated. And his boy was dead. My dad was the only one that stood up in that field. And there was two crying and screaming and wounded. He was just about, you know, my brother says, take me home. And so finally, there was on the road, the ambulance come by, uh, um, a military ambulance, and they picked up the wounded and brought them into the big town. And so, why didn't that come home? Because we had shrapnel out there too. Because, uh, you know, the chickens were in here and the house started burning. And, and we had a, a box about this long, this wide, that high, and we had it for years. We were 40 years under the Germans, and we had the Amer Americans and the English flying over all the time. And so we were prepared to go out of the house in case we were firebombed. And, but we always were told, get the box. There was a whole set of clothing, underwear and top clothing for each one of us. And so when these bomb drops dropped, one of them, you know where it dropped, right in that box. <laughs> How was that possible? But it, and it was kind of hot and burning, so it ruined the stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But that happened on the sep September about the 2021. No, 20th, you were there. 
So about 23rd, 24th. Uh, about five days after I got there. Well, yeah. And dug a hole in the in the bank in the on the corner of the road and, and set up over there. And uh, the hole we dug, we we lined it with our this camouflage parachute. Oh. And and covered it over with uh, trees and and uh, brush and, and uh, dirt and stuff. So it had a roof on it too. And all we had was a little opening out. It was probably, I suppose, eight by ten in there. But uh, five of us then we stayed in there. And uh, there was a uh, one one rifle, one man, and a bazooka. And a mach light machine gun and the two helpers, and so so we stayed at that spot, and uh, a couple couple days later, they made the big push across the river because we couldn't get across the bridge, the Nijmegen Bridge, which we went in there to to keep the Germans from blowing up. That's was one of the main reasons we jumped in, besides all six, seven other bridges. Mm -hmm. And like the bridge by the railroad track and stuff. This is the bridge across the river. Uh, yeah. <coughs> that's the, yeah, that's that's what they call the Nijmegen Bridge. They couldn't get across the river there to go north. But anyway, uh, to the well, let's see, it'd be, it'd be to the, to the left of that bridge, when you're looking north, there's a railroad bridge down there. And, uh, of course, that was occupied too. And so the airborne, they decided they were going to cross the river in some little rubber boats. And so they did. And. They a lot of them got killed that day, huh. and uh, they they pulled me up there, and uh, the machine gunner and stuff from the corner that day. So them support them guys are going across the river, but the river too wide to shoot across anyway with the bazooka. And uh, they took us up there, and when they got the crossing made and got the bridge. Then uh, we come back to the corner, and uh, except a few little outs here and there, and then back and forth a couple times, I stayed there on that corner for for uh, 62 days. We stayed there, then we then we pulled out and went. Once back in a while, he got out of the hole to come across. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, well, we didn't stay there. We didn't stay in that hole the whole time. We was doing other things too, you know. But uh, that's where where I camped, uh, anyway, right there. And uh, divisional headquarters was set up uh, right behind us, uh, that corner in the woods. There was small trees there in that woods. And, and stuff. They were set up there, the whole outfit back there. It's the and, same uh, day. Take quite, a, the same quite a few times. Uh, One year after he turned. The Germans shelled us and 